My name is Chris Buckley, and I'm the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour. The Federation represents 54 unions and a million workers and defends the rights of workers in Ontario, whether they belong to a union or not. The majority of Ontarians don't want government cuts. Two-thirds of Ontarians do not support government's actions. Today, community champions, labour and community allies in Ontario are on Queen's Park Circle, sending the message that families and communities need an Ontario for all, not just the rich few. Conservative MPPs have been avoiding Queen's Park spotlight for five months now, but Ontarians have not forgotten the damage they have done and what they're about to do. Communities and families across the province are feeling the results of government cuts in their schools and in the lack of safety enforcement in workplaces across the province. While the Ford Conservatives were in hiding, the people of Ontario have been building the resistance. Ontarians need a government that supports communities instead of making cuts. It's time to build an Ontario for all. You know, when Doug Ford first got elected, he stated he would find efficiencies, but no workers would lose their jobs. I've been representing workers for 34 years, and whenever the boss said they were looking for efficiencies, workers' jobs were on the line. Doug Ford promised no worker would lose their job under his government. Well, that's not true. Up here with me are a few people who are out of work as a result of conservative cuts in education, health care, legal aid, social services. Folks like Lindsay Wood, who worked in Chatham as a small, in, in a small town in Western Ontario. As an occasional teacher, long-term assignments for 12 years with no permanent work, Lindsay's up here with us today with her newborn baby. This year, as of September, she received a no supply work, was not even offered long-term assignments this year as no jobs were available. She has since had a baby, two weeks ago in fact. Life is precarious for her and her family now. She is a math and science teacher. The very subjects that Doug Ford says that Ontario students are failing in she can't help those students now with extra help. Students have called her and asked her if she can help. Students have called her numerous times, but she can't help them because she's not employed. Each one of these workers impacted by this government cuts have stories. They are the people, the families, and the communities that have been impacted by this government's cuts. I encourage you to talk to them and get their stories when we're done here. And they're not the only ones who have been laid off because of conservative actions across the province. More than a thousand teachers and education workers have already lost their jobs. Public schools in Ontario will lose approximately 10,000 teachers over the next five years due to an increase in class sizes if this government doesn't change course to fully fund public education. I'm talking about almost 1,300 health care workers who's lost their jobs in the health care because of the health care changes. I'm talking about thousands of auto workers and auto parts workers who are losing their jobs in this province with no fight back from the government. It's absolutely shameful. I'm here today to send a message to this government that we are not going away. The labour movement is here to fight against conservative cuts. We are here to stand with communities right across Ontario that want an Ontario for all. This government has shown again and again that it is no friend to workers. In fact, the first day our Premier was elected, as the President of the Ontario Federation of Labour, I reached out and requested a meeting with Doug Ford. I've made four requests since he's been elected. All four have been ignored. He's no friend of workers, folks. On October the 16th, the Premier refused to take action to improve health and safety for temp agency workers. A fifth worker employed by a temp agency was killed at Fear of Foods three weeks ago. That's five workers since 1999 two workers since Doug Ford has been elected. Instead, he chose to arrest eight peaceful protesters who were demanding he enact an already passed piece of legislation. That legislation is Section 83 of the Workplace Safety Insurance Act. All it will take to help these temporary hiring agencies is a Doug Ford to sign this legislation he refuses to. The Minister of Labour, Monty McNaughton, refuses to meet with the labour movement. The Conservatives are attacking frontline public workers who deliver services every day with Bill 124. That bill will put our communities at risk, compromising every sector, health care, long-term care, all levels of education, social services, and more. 
They are limiting their compensation to a rate below inflation. And at the same time, as the, as the Conservative government proposes limiting compensation increases for public servants to 1%, it gave deputy ministers a 14% wage increase. That's not an Ontario for all. That's the Ford government taking care of their rich buddies. The Conservatives are also hurting the education of kids across this province. They are cutting one in four secondary school classroom teachers and increasing class sizes from grades four to 12. They are cutting supports for special education, including students with autism in elementary and secondary schools. Ontario students are losing more than 50,000 classes, including STEM, co-op, and skilled trades. This is no way to prepare for the future of Ontario. The government has no plan to address the climate emergency. Instead of working to stop climate change, they ended the cap and trade program and cancelled 758 green energy contracts, costing the province billions of dollars. Labour and community, the united power of many, know that we can win against this government. We know that this government can be swayed. They have backed down on some cuts to autism services, the planned upload of Toronto Transit System, and paused their changes to social assistance reforms. We are going to keep up the fight until we win on Ontario for all. Today the PCs came back to Queen's Park. The labour movement and community groups were here to meet them and tell them to change the agenda. We know that there is no fiscal crisis here in Ontario. Ontario doesn't have a spending problem, it has a revenue problem. Instead of cutting the services Ontario's depend on, the PCs should be asking the province's corporations and most wealthy to pay their fair share to ensure the government can properly invest in Ontario. The Labour Movement and its community allies are here to demand better for all Ontarians, whether they belong to a union or not. It is workers coming together in solidarity that will protect all of us from this government's harmful cuts and legislation. The Premier should know by now that he should not underestimate the power and determination of the Ontario Labour Movement. It's time to build on Ontario for all, where no one is left behind. In closing, I'd like to just say to the Ford government, you have the power to do what's right for all workers in this province. You have the power to change the agenda, but you need to have the will to take care of all the people in the province of Ontario, not just your rich friends and the rich and wealthy corporations. Ontarios depend on that, and the labour movement, we will fight to the bitter end to make a province for everyone. That concludes our press conference. I would take any questions for myself or any of the workers up here or any of the labor leaders. But understand one thing, folks, the labor movement is here for the long haul. Thank you very much. Perfect time. I just <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm, I'm just wondering either for, for, for anybody else. Sorry, you're late. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, are you, I mean, are you concerned at all now that the, um, now that the legislator is sitting again and negotiations are ongoing, that the demonstrations that we're seeing outside uh, you know, could in any way affect the talks uh, in a negative way? Abs absolutely not. You know what? These, these sh signs of solidarity and pushback are a message to the Ford government that people have not forgotten the cuts to date. People have not forgotten what they have on the books. And as a labor movement, as I said in my remarks, whether workers belong to a union or not, we are never going to stop fighting for the Ontario we want. And that's an Ontario where no one is left behind. And Doug Ford and all of his MPPs better understand that we're not going away. Um, it, obviously, it's been obviously a long layoff. Um, they've said that there's going to be a gentler tone, a kind of calmer tone overall. What are your hopes? Uh, expectations for what we see in the House, not just today, but I mean throughout this particular... Well, there was a rumor that the Premier was in the Witness Protection Program. I don't know if he was or not, but after a five-month break, maybe they've taken a few steps back and had a good look at what they've done since they've been elected. If they choose not to change their attacks on workers, if they choose not to change their attack on our public sector workers, if they choose to continue to try to privatize, we are going to fight them every step of the way. We are going to build the Ontario we want, whether we have the government with us or not. And uh, finally, this might be uh, a better question. Uh, do you think that now that we've avoided the school strike uh, that, uh, sorry, excuse me, the school support strike, I mean, 
Um, does that give some sort of hope that the the situation with the teachers can is this be, for Fred? For Fred, yes, sorry. for Fred. Sorry, for Fred. I mean, can you speak, can you speak to that at all? The fact that you know the school support strike was uh, avoided, and now we have this looming situation with teachers. And does that give you some optimism? Uh, that's a word we hear kind of. Our about schools are, and students and families are still dealing with massive cuts that are uh, that are in the public education system, and our union stands in solidarity with teachers as they defend class sizes, as, as they defend services for students, because we understand that those services are important, uh, not just in schools, but we are seeing massive cuts that are still planned in social services, at universities, through our health care system. And so as Chris was saying, like the reason we're here today is to remind the government that this growing resistance against cuts is happening not just here at Queen's Park, but in communities across the province. And it will be maintained. It will grow because people value services, whether those are our teachers in our schools, uh, whether those are support staff in our schools, whether those are folks at universities in our healthcare system, in social services, in our towns and cities. These are services that value, that we are all value. I, Chris, or both of you, Fred, in terms of what we're seeing today, I understand it's going to be lasting a lot throughout the day. Um, and is that also the plan uh, for the uh, coming weeks? Are we expecting to see these types of demonstrations consistently over, the, uh, over uh, going into November, et cetera? All I can say about that is stay tuned. As I said earlier, we're not going away. And as Fred just reminded you, we're building resistance. People are educating themselves. As we take our Power of Many campaign across Ontario, and we're having town hall meetings and we're having gatherings and our affiliates are having meetings with their members. We're educating people that we could have such a better province. We're educating people that conservatives are no friend of workers. I'm nobody special. I'm just a, a person who's been privileged to represent workers at a number of different levels over 34 years. One would think when the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour reaches out to a newly elected premier of Ontario, I would get a meeting. I know what I'm being ignored. And I'm not going to kiss anybody Drew Ren to meet with me. I know how to push back and I know how to fight back. Anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you for being here, folks. And congratulations on that beautiful little baby you have there.